Hi learners, you're welcome to our ninth lesson in science. And I hope you're doing well. So I encourage you to keep on watching the lesson videos. And if you're not able to watch previous videos, do so so that you can understand the new videos that are been uploaded. In our previous lesson, lesson 8, we studied the operation of the pinhole camera. We studied the features of the pinhole camera. And we finally touched on the characteristics of image formed by the pinhole camera. In our lesson today, we are expected to describe how shadow is formed. How shadow is formed. Now, we want to look at the, defini the definition of shadow. Now, before we touch on the de definition of shadow, it is important to note that shadow formation is an evidence that light travels in a straight line. So let's take note of that. Another evidence is what we looked at yesterday, the operation of the pinhole camera. It's another evidence that light travels in a straight line. So let's take note of these important evidences. Now let's move on to look at the meaning of shadow. We are saying that shadow is an area of darkness formed when an opaque object is placed in the path of light. Shadow is an area of darkness formed when an opaque object is placed in the path of light. Or, shadow is an area of darkness cast by an opaque object placed between a source of light and a screen. Shadow is an area of darkness cast by an opaque object placed between a source of light and a screen. In the definitions, we have area of darkness, we also have opaque objects, we also have source of light, and we have screen. Make sure to include at least two or three of these keywords in your definitions. You score a point. All right, let's move on to look at types of shadows. Types of shadows. Now we are saying that the type of shadow formed depends largely on the source of light. So the types of sources of light to be considered include point source of light, as you can see here, point source of light, and an extended source of light. A point source of light can be created by creating a hole using pin or needle or nail in a cardboard. Place it in front of a source of light. The streak of light you see in the hole represents point source of light. An extended source of light can be presented by candle, light, bulb, etc. In other words, an extended source of light is larger in area than the point source of light. And we are seeing that these types of source of light determine the types of shadow we are about to look at. So now let's take a look at the first type of shadow. Good. Amber. Umbra. Umbra refers to the total area of darkness cast when an opaque object is placed between a point source of light and a screen. It refers to a total area of darkness cast when an opaque object is placed between a source of light and a screen. So in the definition, you have total, complete area of darkness. And we also have opaque object placed between a point source of light. 
the screen. So the diagram explains things better. So this is a point source of light, okay, with the rays of light hitting the uh, opaque object. Now the rays are blocked by the opaque object, so an area of darkness is cast on the screen. And the area is deep shadow or total darkness called ambra, as you can see on the screen here. So this is a diagram. Now, let's go to the second type. The second type is called penumbra. And it refers to partial area of darkness cast. Partial area of darkness cast when an opaque object is placed between an extended source of light and a screen. Partial area of darkness, extended source of light in the screen. So again, the picture speaks for itself. So this is a large light source or an extended source of light consisting of several points of source of light. Several points source of light. And as you can see, this is a big object. Now we have the darkest, darkest part, still the umbra here. But around the darkest part, the umbra, we have partial shadow called the penumbra. As you can see, partial shadow, penumbra. You have been seeing it all the time on, against the wall on the floor. So we have the partial one called the penumbra, and the total one is called umbra. All right. In today's lesson, we touched on the meaning of shadow formation as one of the evidence that light travels in a straight line. We proceeded to look at two definitions of shadow. And then we touched on types of shadow. We said the types depend on the kind of source of light that forms it. We identify point and extended or large source of light as sources of light. And then we look at the types of shadow, the umbra and penumbra. All right. Earlier, I asked you to read on reflection of light. If you have done that, that's good. But before we reach that topic, in our next lesson, lesson 10, we shall look at eclipse of the sun and the moon, an extension of shadow formation. Do your best to read on this topic. Very interesting, of course. If possible, learn how the diagram is drawn. Then look at the differences between eclipse of the sun and eclipse of the moon. Do your best to do the exercise. And you are reminded that all previous exercises should be done before I give you the final update of one to six assignment scores. One to six assignment scores. All right. To meet again. Stay safe.